DME TV and you are watching the program DME Dialogue. This is a program where we invite celebrated persons, eminent persons, to talk on varied subject so that some addition to the existing knowledge can be made. Today we have with us Mr. Ineas Hendrik. He is from Belgium, but then he has been living in India for long and uh, during this association he has contributed a lot to Indian economy and business. Uh, thank you uh, Mr. Indias in this uh, program. Uh, this is a program as I said wherein we talk to some important people and since you have been living in India for a very very long period and you have been involved in so many things as far as Indian business and economy is concerned India's trade with the foreign countries is concerned so how did this happen how did you decide to come to India and work here so I'm from Belgium yeah a small country in Europe yeah we have only 1.1 crore people <laughs> yeah and when I look at India, India is a growing place. Mm -hmm. India is a growing market. We grow with 78%. We have a young middle class that is growing and spending. I felt that the world is India now. Yeah. Europe is not growing. Europe is growing with hardly 1%. Mm -hmm. I felt that opportunities are in India. Mm. That is one of the reasons why I decided to settle here. Yeah, but something would have happened which, have, which would have brought you to of India. Of course. Um, we want to know that story. There is How another reason and um, I'm lucky to have an Indian wife. Oh, she you. belongs to Delhi and mm. um, that is also a reason why we moved to Delhi. Yeah, okay. Not only because of um, Rina is her name, because of her, but also because of opportunities in India. So you want to stay for all your life in India or you want to go back to Belgium finally? I think as per now the plan is to stay in India. Yeah. I'm used to um, Indian life, war and hospitality for the, for the last 12 years. We moved yeah. in 2006 so, yeah. and when I compare um, life between the two continents, yeah. India is a happening place. Yeah. India is a happening place not only for business but also the warmth, the hospitality, the friendship of the people. Yeah. There are still, there are still things happening. And mm. a small example: mm. when I travel in a train in Belgium, mm. everybody will be busy with the headphones, with the magazine, mm. and forgets to smile, forgets mm. how to have fun. Mm. If I travel in India, mm. and it happened recently. Um, I was traveling to Bikaner mm. and um, there were some people next to me, they started talking in Hindi mm. and I told them, I don't understand your language, but I kept on talking in Hindi. Mm. Then I said, Me Hindi nahi bolta hu. Mm. He said, oh my God, you are not <laughs> Indian. He started to take his rotis and started to share his meal. Yeah. How beautiful, how much life is there, how much mm. warm. It's about sharing life. This is India. So, so you speak Hindi comfortably? No, not really. Yeah. Um, I have not made an effort, but I can sp speak small sentences. I can understand. I can manage. Yeah. The advantage of India is, of course, English. Mm. So your wife works with you in the same business? Or no, she's she is a, a part-time um, corporate trainer. She mm. specializes in soft skills. Because today, what is the difference between a computer and a mm. human being? Mm. It is that we have empathy, we have emotion, mm. but we need to express this. We need to know how to communicate, how to communicate our ideas. We need to dream big. Mm. And so it's important that we um, talk well, that we are able to express our ideas. And this is part of soft skills training. So your kids live with you, they study here or uh, they are back in Belgium? No, um, we realized that uh, overpopulation is a big uh, problem in India and we decided to help the problem of overpopulation. We don't have kids. <laughs> yeah, okay. So uh, for whatever time, I mean 10, 12 years you have been in India. Yes. So what kind of business you set up here or how did you start uh, making a career in India? Okay, so um, when I um, moved in 2006, I um, had some contacts in India because my wife is Indian. I kept on visiting India for business since 95. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I knew quite well what was India about before moving. And mm -hmm. of course, it's a big difference between visiting a country mm -hmm. and living in a country. Yeah. So, but I had a few contacts in both countries and mm -hmm. I started to help companies from Belgium and the neighboring countries to enter, grow and succeed in India. Meaning we are helping them to start an India, hand-holding, 
market entry, feasibility studies. So this is what we do here. So it's like a business consultancy? It's that consultancy. You and later yeah. I, um, in um, 2014, I upgraded the um, company. I joined hands with two Indian friends. And now we can reach a wider span of uh, companies and also specialize in a wider range of uh, uh, domains. So, uh, I mean, how many European companies keep on coming, setting up their business in India? Um, when we look at Belgian companies or from Holland, it's not easy. We have helped a few companies, we have done feasibility studies, mm. but the whole problem is that for us Europeans, India remains a difficult market. Here in India, we're happy and we say, look at the ease of doing business ranking, we are at number 100 and we feel very proud. But that means there are still 99 countries in the world mm -hmm. where ease of doing business is easier. Mm. So, um, I give you one example. Uh, I have a potential investor. I receive him at the Delhi airport and we go to our office in Gurgaon. Yeah. I want to see as an investor where I put my money. Mm. I want to see if I send people from Belgium, what is the environment? I have a beautiful airport, T3. But the, once I come out of the airport, I go to Mahalparpur, I'm stuck for half an hour, traffic mm. jam. I go to Gurgaon, I take the golf course extension road, garbage, 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 everything is broken. So that reflects the difficulty in doing business. It's not about the environment, but also the ease of doing business. And India still needs to go a long way. So you have been focusing more uh, on the companies which are from Belgium, uh, Netherlands and Luxembourg or in other That's parts right. of That's right. Since um, uh, we are from Belgium and uh, I'm also vice president of the Belgian Luxembourg Business Association in Delhi. So we have good contacts with companies in Luxembourg. And we are also closely working with the embassy of the Netherlands and Delhi. So we also target uh, companies from um, the Netherlands. See, a lot of companies target mm. the whole of Europe, but it's better to focus yeah. and say, okay, these are the three countries and we help companies from these countries to settle in So India. these European companies, they look for setting up their production units here or they are merely interested in business and trade? See, we always tell them that to be competitive in India, it's better to start manufacturing here. But of course, for many of them, again, when you see the environment, the infrastructure, it's a bit too far. Mm -hmm. For them, they want the easiest way, that is just moving containers. Because if you export to other European countries, America, it's like same way of operating. Mm -hmm. um, when you work with India, mm -hmm. it's not the same way. It's quite difficult to have um, to start, to have licenses and so on. So people want to move containers. But then of course you cannot compete with the engines who make locally at cheaper prices. So um, it, it's difficult. We, people know India is a growing market, has scope, but to start and make in India, it's still, we have still have a long way to go. Uh, but then uh, what kind of problems you would have noticed these years if somebody is interested in setting up a manufacturing unit and uh, any European or any foreigner who is doing this in India, what kind of problem that person will be confronting? See, um, if I may compare with China, for instance, I come to India and I say, look, um, I will start producing these beautiful tables. Mm -hmm. I export to the world. Mm -hmm. I have heard about the Make in India program and I said, well, beautiful, um, let's go to India. I create employment in India, but then I need to set up a factory, I need to acquire land, I need to hire people, I get licenses, I need to uh, talk to the government, it's not easy. It takes two years by the time the factory is ready. So right? the problem is basically ease in doing business, that's a that's problem right. in India. When I compare to China, I go to some industrial areas, mm -hmm. Warehouses are ready, or mm. buildings are ready. Mm. They just have to start electricity and water. Tomorrow I can start. Tomorrow I can start. In India, if I want to start tomorrow, I can't. It takes me two years to set up compliances and whatever. Yes, so it's about environment. Mm. But the government of India recently has done, has taken a lot of efforts to uh, uh, increase this uh, positive environment and ease in doing business. That's right, there is an, an, an improvement. Look mm. at GST now, um, mm. trading within the country becomes easier. Mm. Uh, more and more um, applications are online. Look mm. at uh, GST filing is online. But it is one thing, if you look at ground reality, there is still a long way to go. Look at FDIs. There are hardly companies investing in India. Why is this? Mm -hmm. Because it's easier to double my one rupee or my one euro in America than here. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So ease of doing business, infrastructure, it's still a big issue. So what do you think, what kind of, I mean, if I ask you to tell three important uh, measures which need to be taken by government of India to uh, have an improvement in this kind of environment? Okay, it's, um, we, some states have it already. Um, what we say, one window for all your clearances. I don't have to go to 10 different departments, okay. deal with 30 different officers. Mm. Give me one window mm. when I get all the um, licenses, whatever I need, mm. even to hire people, whatever. One officer, one window. Mm. Government should think like a businessman. Government should not think like, wow, I'm doing a service. No, you're paid to serve me. You're a civil servant. You forget that. Mm. Become more open like a business. Mm. Imagine if you would not get money from the government mm. and you had to run your department just based on output. You would be bankrupt tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Right, yes? right, so right. become more customer friendly. Mm -hmm. That's important. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. Also, is um, um, in the long run, don't change your... Um, policies, policies yeah. like we want FDI in mm. e-commerce, mm. we allow Flipkart, we allow Walmart, mm. there are certain rules mm. which maybe these people have bypassed, but then tomorrow we say, as from now on, you people can't operate because your cloud tail, Amazon, is doing 90% of the business which is not allowed. Mm. IBM, thank you for investing in India, but now we slap you with um, 600 million um, um, Chalan because you have not paid duties in the past. The Vodafone case, we know, people want stability. This is still not there in India. But the government is in, in, in India, since it's a democratic country, it's a populist government, so any government has to think of the interest of the local people and their employment, maybe because of this, this is happening. That I realize. Yeah. A democracy mm. is a wonderful thing, mm. but it's yeah. a slow thing. Mm. But it's better to have, in my opinion, mm. a democracy than a communist system mm. because we need to listen to the voice of the people. Mm, I right. know a side effect of democracy mm, is yeah. many layers of uh, governance mm. and of course it slows down the process. But uh, uh, how do you look at Indian economy, the way it's uh, happening, uh, the way it's progressing? Do you feel that it will be going upward, g I mean going by the GDP numbers, going by the international trade, going by the export? So uh, how do you look at Indian economy? Well, I'm positive mm. because here is a country where people are still spending. Yeah. There is a big but. We mm. need to create jobs. Mm, yeah. If you have no jobs, mm. I cannot spend. If I don't spend, no need to make this product. Right? Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm optimistic. We have a young population. We can debate about the middle class. Is it 50 million? Is it 300 million? People will earn a bit more money. They will mm. go from step one to step two. They mm. will spend yeah. with ups and downs. Yeah. But I believe in India because of the young population having aspirations and they will spend. Uh, but then the kind of thing which are happening uh, in Europe uh, particularly and uh, this uh, Britain is uh, on the route to exit which is Brexit from the European Union. What kind of impact you foresee will be on Indian economy because of Brexit? So I feel it will impact the Indian economy less than it will impact the other European countries. The advantage of the European Union is that we have um, free movement of goods, services, capital, persons. So if I export my goods to Belgium I can s or UK, mm -hmm. I can send them to any other 28 member states of the European Union without customs clearing. It's mm -hmm. like GST in India now. Mm -hmm. When yeah. I import goods in Bombay, mm -hmm. I can send them to all the other states. For Europe, this will stop because it seemed that there will be no deal, no Brexit, uh, mm. a Brexit without a deal, this will stop. So there will be less access mm. to UK market and to European market. For India, of course, the advantage of Indian companies is that when you settle in UK, you have access to the European market. You yeah. have access to 27 other countries. With Brexit, this will stop. Yeah. Yeah, but then, but then, uh, what kind of advantage will be there? Whether it will be in terms of opening new opportunities to Indians in the UK, or to have more uh, employment opportunities, particularly, or to have more business links or more trade between India and the UK. See, um, without agreement on 29th March next month, the UK and Europe will split. Yeah, that means that um, India and UK will be able to negotiate an own trade deal. Hmm. 
and you might get a better deal than what we had with the European Union. But we have to realize that a trade deal takes mm. time. The trade deal between India and Europe is going on for the last 20 years, right? So we have to look at Brexit, but we need to focus on the overall economy in Europe. It's you have an old population, a growing yeah. population, not spending. So I don't see too much happening in Europe, a growth of maximum one and a half percent. So Brexit or no Brexit, yes, for instance, um, I had a talk with the um, customs officers um, from Belgium here in Delhi, mm -hmm. and they said with a hard Brexit, meaning without a transition period, without an agreement, um, we expect that the GDP of Belgium will go down with 2%. Oh, so what will happen? What do you foresee? I mean, the, this could result in the devaluation of pound as compared to euro or as compared to other currencies of the world. So it, it went down already when uh, uh, in 2017, um, UK invoked Article 50. Article 50 said that every country of the EU can leave the country. Yeah. Uh, stock market went uh, down a bit. So if the market of the pound goes down, if you are having a contract mm. with the UK in pounds and mm. you get less rupees, yeah. then your profit goes down mm. or it becomes a zero uh, profit operation. But when you import from the UK and the pound goes down, mm. your import becomes cheaper. So because of this Brexit impact, do you feel that the rupee is going to be strengthened vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, pound or vis-a-vis -vis, uh, euro? Uh, you, I think that the um, Indian currency, the rupee, mm. is more and more linked to the American dollar. Yeah. So UK plays a small role on the world platform. Mm. Um, I think we have to look at what happens in the uh, US economy, because uh, in all countries around the world, it's more that what happens with uh, America, and that makes our stock market and our currency. So after Brexit, whether the doors will be open for India, more in UK or more in the EU? So um, UK is, a, um, I mean, Europe is already open, right? Mm. UK is closed. Mm. With you, European Union, we have the deal. Mm. With UK, we need to renegotiate the deal under the World Trade Organization. Yeah. And this negotiation will take time. Mm. Of course, there is a good relationship between UK and mm. India. Mm. A deal might happen quite fast, but I, I, I think it's about okay. two uh, years. Can you suggest certain measures which government India should take to boost its export? Um, yes, um, they can talk to the government in UK and say, look, uh, we have a long-standing trade relationship. Mm. Um, now, um, we knew that whatever we sent to the UK was as per the custom duties of the European Union. Now we talk about World Trade Organization. Why can't we have our own agreement? If this uh, product, this furniture, um, mm. uh, attracts 8% duty mm. yeah. in UK, yeah. why can't we export more and we uh, have a 5% or zero rate duty. Mm -hmm. And also, um, on the other way around, uh, we can say, okay, if UK invests in India, we can give you some more facilitations. Yeah. Uh, what kind of role you see for World Trade Organization in deciding these uh, uh, things uh, uh, as far as trade between India and other countries see, is UK concerned. has signed the World Trade uh, Organization agreement. UK has to follow the rules of the um, uh, we, uh, WTO. Yeah. Yeah. So they can play a negotiating role. Mm -hmm. So uh, what will you suggest to the young entrepreneurs in India who are interested in doing something good in business and who want to uh, deal with European countries and to have some trade and business? What kind of uh, suggestion you want to give? First of all, um, I want to tell them that uh, you need a solid plan. Yeah. It's not like, hmm, I want to go to Europe. You mm -hmm. need a solid plan. You have to have a five-year plan minimum, right? What do you want to do? How do you want to sell your product? Why mm -hmm. is your product unique? Mm -hmm. How will you communicate that? How will I convince you to invest in my project? How will I communicate to you to buy my product? So it's very important to become a top person in communications, okay. become a five-star communicator. Right. Of course, if I deal with UK, mm. they speak English, we speak English. Yeah. But it's important to convince people, why is my idea better than your idea? Why should you invest in me? Yeah. And in India, we, as a country, we are used to produce at lesser cost, mm. right? Mm. So we can have um, products that are cheaper than what is made in UK or mm. Europe. Right. So we have a chance, but it all depends also, I need a visa to work there, to stay there. 
So yeah. my government or the mm. Indian government has mm. to facilitate mm. the um, startups there. Yeah. Right. So thank you, Mr. Indyas, talking to okay. us as part of this DME dialogue. So this was Mr. Indyas from Belgium, who was talking to DME TV as part of DME dialogue program. That is all on this program.